What's going on, guys? How's it going? I don't even think I actually um, did a story on Instagram. Let me do that. That'll that'll definitely help. Hold on one sec. I'm going to mute my mic real quick and uh, get a story uh, going here. <clears throat> okay. Guys, I'm posting a story. Hold on one sec. How's it going, guys? How are things? Kydex or leather? Hmm. I don't know. What do you guys think? Kydex or leather? I think uh, Kydex. I'd say Kydex. What do you guys think? Let me post a story on Instagram real quick. I totally forgot. It's been, a, it's been a minute, man. It's been a minute. Let me go to the live stream link over here. Classic Farms. All right. Get the link. Go to Instagram. Put the link up here. Boom, boom. Okay. Good to go. I am fucking suck. All right, put this up here. Boom. This is right there. What's up, Brandy? How's it going? Good seeing you again. Good seeing you again. All right. Jessica, what's going on? How's your time with Gun Jesus and James? We're going to talk about that in a second, Jessica. Hold on. And let me go to class firearms real quick and post a story. Stand by. Stand by. Come on. There we go. Okay, let's put the link up here. Sorry, guys. I'm a fucking boomer. Hold on. Uh, live stream. Okay, and let me put Twitch. Twitch. Live on Twitch. There you go. Live on Twitch. Let me get YouTube in here. If you guys check Instagram, uh, Class Firearms official Instagram, you'll you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, live because I'm about to post a story on YouTube. Live on YouTube. Okay, why not? Let's do this. Um, and good to go. Okay, I think we are good to go. Let me see. This is on. Classic Firearms is... Oops, oops. Uploading and done. Okay. Let's talk about suppressors covers next. That's also important for IR signature. Uh, but, okay, let me put this thing away and let's get to it. What's going on, guys? How's it going? How are things? General Lee, good seeing you again. Good seeing you, man. Welcome back. Sorry, guys, it's been a while since I live streamed. I was busy doing the thing in Germany, and then I was in Istanbul, Turkey, visiting some friends and family. And I uh, just got back and... Um, yeah, this is my first live stream in the last three weeks. So sorry about the, uh, uh, MIA thing right there. Okay. Let's see what I'm, I'm going to check the uh, chat real quick. Hold on one sec. Uh, <laughs> Jonathan, that's pretty good. I can't hear your weak pro suppressor arguments over my tinnitus. <laughs> that's good. That's pretty good. I mean, come on. You should have suppressors, right? Uh, let's see. Uh, so Jessica, I want to talk about this. You know, we're going to get to guys. guys we're going to talk about suppressors. Should you suppress your rifle or not? I mean, spoiler alert, you should. But there are some obviously negatives to it, which we'll talk about. But I want to talk about this. Now, I just got back from IWA. Anybody know what IWA is? Have you guys ever heard of IWA, the European SHOT Show? Let me know. I'm going to read the uh, comments. Andrew, uh, about the CMMG Mark 47, I think it was pretty freaking good. Uh, we actually did a video on that a while back. <clears throat> 
Hold on. Two, two, two. Yeah, so IWA, I'm going to try to put up a uh, video. So we're going to do uh, some screen sharing, actually, with you guys. On this live stream, I'm going to actually watch uh, a couple of videos with you guys. Stand by. Hold on one sec. Uh, IWA. Let me type that, see if we come up. Dude, see, when you type IWA, literally James Reeves comes up, Polar Tactical, and Classic Firearms. Just the three of us. And we went there one time, which was last year, right? So IWA is, this is from last year. Let me get the uh, screen up for you guys right here. Uh, fucking trying to figure this thing out. Share screen. Okay. Yeah, good to go. Perfect. Okay, so Jessica, I'm going to go ahead and shut this thing down. So this... See this? It's cool as hell. It's way better than SHOT Show. I actually like it a lot better than SHOT Show in Vegas. You do this thing, that thing just pops up. You get in there. A bunch of European Hey, folks. guys. Here we are at EVA, this Germany, Nuremberg, year. 2023. And uh, they're going to open the doors for us. And we're going to get in there and do some cool interviews, check out some cool products. People are waiting. Oh, they open the doors. Looks for now. This is with LMT. Obviously, the creator of LMT. Reasons. It was just simply way too close to the military version for ATF regulations. So uh, here's a beautiful piece. Okay, so you've got some. I remember this guy. Yeah. Dude, it's incredible, man. Look, look at me and Adam. Uh, me and Adam uh, from Canada. I love this. It's thing. just it's been, it's gone gangbusters, man. It's been so awesome. Such a soft shooting. Like, it's incredible. I mean, what rival happened? as is, is, man, is a very soft, yeah, a soft shooting pistol. Yeah. yeah. Oh, as is. But this rival as. Damn it. You can now this actually get that guys. instant report, that physical shot. feedback if you want, or just and train and teach your child or teach your. Okay. False. So we're at Iwo, but the cool thing about this one that's a little different than our SHOT Show booth is we got a little more room. And something like this is going to be at SHOT Show next year. We're going to have some cool stuff like this at NRA. But first time you're going to get your butt kicked. Uh, but I think loser of said competition does 20 push-ups on the show floor. So you're telling me you're going to do 20 push-ups in this businessman outfit? Well, no, I'm not going to lose. So we're going to start it out. I'm going to engage the top 10. Uh, like the air softers. It was rigged, obviously guys. It was rigged. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, good. Oh, good. All right, good. Seven before. Ah. All right, let's do this. How does it feel to be about to be a no. loser? Stand by. <laughs> hey, y'all, back. Oh my God. He shot worse than me, and he got oh. 16. 17. Yeah. It's easier when you're doing selfies in the gym. 18. 18 and a half. Sure. One more. Finish strong. There we go. Man, this is this is fun. Oh, one more for good measure. So this is Evo, guys. It's amazing. So anyway. Hi, right, sir. High five. There we go. I, I, I we told you they would. This is some stupid high five people. Getting back to it. Stop sharing. Perfect. You can hear me now, right? I know the the the, uh, the sound of the video was higher than mine, but you can hear me at least a little bit, right? Okay, good. All right, so I got to turn this thing up then. Okay. Press. It should be better right now. Okay. Anyways, so I was at IWA, so we went to Enforce TAC. Guys, there are some freaking amazing guns in Europe that we will never see here. There are simply, there are these awesome European companies. They just, some of them are small companies, right? They make these awesome guns. They don't have an importer to import stuff to the United States. They haven't gotten the ATF paperwork done, all the permissions and all that stuff, like the licenses. So they're just in the, in, in the European area and some awesome, awesome stuff. And HK, for example, right? HK's got the, got the uh, what was that thing, 437? 300 blackout. 300 blackout version. That was incredible. And we'll probably never see it because currently the um, German special forces use that gun. Um, so there's that. Thanks, Brandon. Appreciate it. Got your message. So anyways, I was there for three weeks. We saw some awesome stuff. You guys got to check out the uh, video that's coming out, I think, one of these days. I believe, oh, yeah, tomorrow. 
guys, tomorrow the Enforced Hack video is going to come out. So FYI. Moving on. Um, so what else we got? Tactical Java 15. Kaya, what barrel would you throw in your next build? Freaking 11 and a half, brother. I just straight up go SBR that thing. I, I love a good, good old 11 and a half barrel. It's, in my opinion, that's a do-all barrel. You'll still engage up to four or 500 yards just fine. It's, gr it's a great CQB gun. You know, having that long barrel, man, unfortunately, like a 16-inch, right? Some tight corners, you do expose your barrel to Fatal Funnel. Uh, it's not good. I mean, it, you'll get the job done, but having an 11 and a half kind of compressed ready, good to go. Moving on. So 11 and a half would be mine. And 14.5 is great too, right? 11 and a half, 12 and a half. But mine would be 11 and a half. So, all right. What else? Uh, Hakan, what's your opinion on illegal migration and migrants and uh, Second Amendment? Well, illegal immigration, I mean, let's talk about that. That's fucking illegal, right? So I don't like it. I don't want that in this country. I immigrated myself here. I immigrated here legally. There are people that I know uh, well, who message me. They want to actually come here illegally. I'm like, don't fucking talk to me. If, if you're going to do it illegally, just don't fucking talk to me. Don't. I don't even respond, actually, a lot of those guys. Now, I'm not going to fault people who want to come here and make have a better life. I'll never fault those guys. So I don't want, it's not a black and white issue, but there is a law. You got to adhere those laws. And you can't come here illegally, man. If you, it's nothing personal, let's just say. If you come here illegally, then you're illegal. You're not undocumented. What the fuck is going on with this world culture? Undocumented? Illegal? It's illegal. You, okay. When somebody breaks the law, that person becomes a criminal, is that not right? Is that not what we say here? Criminal, right? You're a criminal. You, It's a crime. So you have committed a crime, which is you violated the law, whatever law that is. And so you have become a criminal. So when somebody enters into this country or any country for that matter, they become an illegal or they become a criminal. Now, the word criminal always is not like that doesn't make you a piece of shit. That doesn't make you a bad person. I've met a lot of criminals, awesome people. They've found themselves in bad circumstances. It happens, right? That doesn't mean you're a bad person, but you shouldn't take it personally when people say you're illegal here and you need to go back. So I understand it's a complex issue. It's not a black and white thing, but people suck the living shit out of this system Uh jumping over the border and doing some bad things. There's some bad things happening here. And I always, I always want to say this about the illegal immigration. People on the left, and by the way, I'm just a fucking center guy. I'm a center right guy, let's just say. I'm an independent, registered independent, and I've got values on both sides. I, I lean more conservative for sure. Um, when people say we are compassionate, the people on the left, we're compassionate. There's that. We got to let them in. We got to help them out. We got this and that, that. They don't understand. They are just so fucking tunnel visioned. They don't understand that you are creating a, a, creating a humanitarian crisis at the border. When you open your borders or you actually relax or lax those uh, laws or enforcement down there, you are creating a vacuum Everybody else in the world hears about the softness of the southern border of the United States, so they flood there. When you flood there, guess what happens? Criminal enterprises start to appear out of nowhere, right? So people start doing human trafficking, drug trafficking, firearms, uh, arms, arms dealing, arms trafficking. And people are getting raped, killed, abused, down at that border, and there's nothing the United States can do. And those people who are very compassionate about people, when you open up your borders like that, you are creating that vacuum. If you actually seal the fuck of that border, seal that thing up big time, well, you're not going to have that problem because the border is going to be sealed. There's going to be no business for those cartels or those human traffickers or arms dealers or drug dealers, whatever they are, right? There's going to be no business for them. 
or it's going to be extremely hard and people around the world will get the word that you can't no longer jump the border, jump the fence and uh, get in the United States. So there will be less, less humanitarian crisis down there. So if you open up your view a little bit, you'll see. So, But people on the left refuse to see the humanitarian crisis that's being created at that border with the Biden policies. I don't know, man. What do you guys think? You let me know. You guys let me know. I, and by the way, I'm not a, I'm not being a Trumper or Biden or who the fuck. I, I don't care. I, I just want to speak the truth here. What do you guys think about the crisis that's at uh, happening at the border? Do you think the left or people who are a, a proponent of this border to be open, do you think those guys are creating a, a much greater humanitarian crisis? Or do you think... Um, us, if you want to seal that border, uh, would we be creating the humanitarian crisis by sealing the border? Which one creates a bigger problem? You guys tell me. Like, people don't fucking think about this shit, man. Like, I, I, it's so easy to just think about, oh, yeah, you know what? We, we want to help people. Oh, we're compassionate. Dude, me too. I don't give a shit what color you are, what religion you are, what, what you have between your legs. I understand Anybody who wants to come to this country, I understand that they want to have a better life. I will never fault those people. I was one of those fucking guys. I wanted to have a better life. I came here. I lived the American dream. I became an American. And here I am. I've served the fucking country for over 10 years. I try to do my best to this day, educate certain people within the uh, realms of my own skills. I continue to serve in ways I can. But, you know, I did it the right way. Okay? Okay. I wasn't at a border somewhere because, oh, shit, it's open. Maybe I can just get through and just dealt with the cartels and got raped and this and that, okay? So the left is creating that vacuum, humanitarian crisis down at the border. And Mexico should be held accountable because Mexico is just allowing anybody around the world to come to Mexico with absolutely no repercussions. It's just insane. If I was the U.S. government, I would slap Mexico with some heavy, heavy, political sanctions, something. Okay, I'd slap Mexico pretty hard. Be like, hey, you better freaking take care of the crisis that you are creating at my border and because you're causing a lot of problems in my country, in my border. And uh, so I'd seal it up and also hold Mexico accountable for that. But, uh, but I'll never fault people who try to come here. I'll never fault them. But they also shouldn't get upset when this country tries to enforce its laws. And left... You are creating the humanitarian crisis, hiding under the name, the covers of compassionate. You're not compassionate. Because of you and your policies, so many women got raped at that border. So many people got killed at that border. So many people got abused. Okay? So many people got ro robbed at that border because of your stupid policies. If that border was sealed... All those people wouldn't deal with that. Yeah, maybe they would still live their miserable lives, whatever the heck that, that they're dealing with in their own countries, which I feel sorry for. But they, they barely get to put together 10 grand, 5 grand, and pay these fucking nameless, faceless cartels. Hope they actually would help them, and they don't. So there's that. Moving on. What else we got? Just say, Kai, have you got the COVID vaccine? Unfortunately and regrettably, yes. Well, I was with the FBI, guys. Okay, when I was with the FBI, I got the uh, two doses. I, we were one of the first ones to get right at, around the time medical professionals were getting it. I got oh, right after, I think. I got the first dose, and then uh, four weeks later, I got the second dose. And then there was these like third and fourth boosters. That's when I said, go screw yourself. I didn't get those. But yeah, um, unfortunately, I did get it. It didn't do shit to me. In fact, what, right after I got the COVID vaccine, up to that point, I never got anything. Like two weeks after that, I got so freaking sick, I got the COVID, and I got like COVID four more times after that. So go figures. I hope that it doesn't have a long-lasting problems with me later on. So moving on. Crunchy, welcome back, brother. How's it going, man? Good seeing you. And by the way, anybody who's tuning in right now, thanks for coming over. It's been three weeks since I live streamed here, and now... I'm back. We're going to talk about should you suppress your rifle or not. 
but everything else in between. I love talking politics. Obviously, we're going to talk about that too. Speaking of that, do you guys, do you guys hear what happened to Trump? Donald Trump? He has, so based on reports, he's got only half a billion dollars in cash. He's, his net worth, by, uh, uh, according to Washington Post, is about four, uh, no, $3 billion. He's got $500 million about that in cash. He tried to post bond, $100 million on a civil case that he did. Judge just freaking rejected his bond. And Letitia, the, the, uh, the attorney general of New York, wants to actually seize his assets, the Trump Tower, the penthouse up there. They actually want to do this. So whether you're a Trumper or not, it doesn't matter. Uh, I promise you I would, I would say this for anybody else out there. Dude, Donald Trump, again, this is not, I'm not backing Donald Trump. Actually, remove his name, just put John Doe there, and whether that's Democratic, Independent, or Republican, doesn't matter. Is the lead political opponent of the current administration, and the attack he's under is, I've no, I don't think this country has ever seen something like this before. Criminally, obviously, they're trying to go after him. I mean, this guy is... He's trying to run for president, and he is the presumptive Republican nominee right now, and, and he is, in fact, going to be the Republican nominee. He ha there's no other choice. They are trying to keep him in the courthouses, in courthouses so he can't freaking run. This is insane. This shit happens in El, El Salvador, man, not in the United States. What do you guys think about this stuff? Seriously, whether you're a Trumper or not, please let me know your thoughts on Donald Trump and what's happening in this current uh, political climate. I'm, I'm really curious about your thoughts on this. It's insane. Like, it just, it's mind-blowing. Like, dude, this is the land of the free. Or was. I don't know what's going on. You guys know Roman Empire. Roman Empire was an empire that everybody said it would never fucking fail. It had the perfect system. The foundation was so strong it was unimaginable for it to fail. Roman Empire failed, guys. Nobody just went and took them down, right? The, internally, they just screwed themselves over. Look at the Ottoman Empire. Internally, like giant empire. The Ottoman Empire, the Turks, right? My ancestors. They screwed themselves over internally. Look at the United States of America. The greatest nation on earth. I don't care what you think, right? This is the greatest state, uh, nation on earth. The greatest system. The American dream to this day is still alive, but I believe it's hanging on by a thread. Don't ever think this country can't go down. Currently, there is an internal war going on. Political war going on. The country is completely divided, and it's a very sad scene. We can have our differences, but it is at a level where people are about to just grab knives and guns and just go after each other. That's how bad it is. So, and we see this. We see this when we actually go on the streets, talk to people on the left, right, independence. You actually feel the tension. But we see this, what's happening with Donald Trump right now. So uh, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts, man? I want to know. We can flip the switch overnight. And I agree with you. Guys, we can switch the flip uh, uh, overnight. It could happen any time. I, I believe, I, listen, what's happening to Donald Trump? Again, I'm not, a, I'm not being a Trumper here. If this was happening to Biden, I probably would say exactly the same things, right? If Trump was doing this to Biden, just reverse, I'd say this is ridiculous. It shouldn't happen in this country. The guy is being indicted left and right. Civil lawsuits. Really, this woman accused of sexual assault, the Donald Trump. Criminally, he wasn't in any way, like they didn't even take it to court because there was nothing there. Criminally, guys, listen, listen to this thing. Criminally, New York couldn't even take it, take the case, like charge the guy, let alone going to court and losing it. There was just nothing there, right? This lady civilly sues him, asks some amount, I don't remember what it was, but it was much less than $86 million is what they asked for damages for a sexual assault case in a freaking coat closet that happened allegedly 30 years ago. And uh, she got $87 million. 
I mean, where is the justice? You guys tell me this. I, like, seriously, $87 million was awarded. Something much more than what she asked for on a case where they couldn't even take it to criminal court because they just didn't have enough evidence. It was a he said, she said thing in a coat closet 30 years ago. This guy was, and I understand, proponent of evidence, right, with civil cases, a proponent of evidence, and then we have beyond a reasonable doubt for criminal cases. You know, if you, uh, if you kind of influence the judge a little bit, then boom, you win in a civil case, right? It's a he said, she said 30 years ago, some crazy lady, because if you don't believe me, watch some of her videos, you'll be like, okay, what the heck? She got way more than what she asked for, $87 million in damages 30 years later from Donald Trump, from a liberal judge and the jury, obviously. This stuff is happening in this country. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to basically, if you guys aren't following this stuff, I follow this stuff. This is happening in this country right now. Right freaking now. So, using the law against uh, your political opponents. Exactly. The guys, and by the way, I understand that, you know, a lot of folks who are watching this right now, you guys are more right-leaning folks, uh, conservative folks. And I am obviously more on the conservative side for sure. But I promise you, it, even if this happened to some left folks, we should be just as upset. Because if it happens to them, it can happen to us. That means we're not free. When I was a police officer, guys, I'd stop a car and I'd be like, hey, can I search your car? Yeah, you know, that's my job. I'm, my job is to be proactive, find shit, what, what's going on. And they'd be like, no, I don't want you to search my, my car. Now, as a police officer, you know, we're not, we're human. So you got your ego too. You're like, oh, you know, I want to get in that car. You know, I bet he's hiding something, got dope, something, right? But he would say no. People would say no to me. And I would internally like it because I'd be like, you know what? I'm glad I fucking live in a country where a person can look at me in the face as a police officer and be like, officer, go fuck yourself. I don't want you to search my car. And me as the police officer would be like, all right. And I look, I don't have anything to get in the car. I'd be like, all right, sir, you have a good day. And I let him go. D do you see? Because if I he can do that, I can do that, Right. That means we're free because a lot of countries, if you go to them, like you go to Russia, you go to freaking a bunch of other countries, you can't do that. As much as they call themselves democratic nations, you cannot do that. And I think we are losing that in this country, guys. Yeah. Kaya, you would not react like that. I have reacted like that many times, guys. Many times. I've said, have a good day many times. Um, so... Kaya, are you losing weight? Your shirt almost fits. Well, Steve, welcome, man. Good seeing you, too. And I love you, too. How's it going, buddy? I mean, straight to the juggler. I see that. My shirt? I mean, yeah. There you go. Fits. No, nah, I'm still the same weight, but I do have a shoulder injury. I'm having a hard time working out properly. You were FBI, you would have flipped. Yes, Vic, if you were that guy, I would have probably flipped because it's you. But other folks, no. All right. Uh, James, you bet, brother. So anyways, that's what's happening. And uh, do you guys, I don't know if you guys heard about the Don Lemon and Elon Musk deal. Don Lemon had... He asked for, he was going to work. Anybody who doesn't know, I'll just fill you in real quick. This is hilarious, by the way. Don Lemon got fired from CNN. And it happens, right? He got an agreement from X, Elon Musk, to be his boss. Five to eight million dollars payment from Elon Musk to uh, have his own show on X. Plus, he asked for a cyber truck. And then Elon agrees to it. They sign a contract. Before he starts his show, he actually interviews Elon Musk. If you guys haven't seen that interview, you have to check it out. It is so freaking funny. So he actually uh, interviews Elon Musk. And during his interview, the entire questioner, every single question he asked, it was an attack to Elon Musk, challenge Elon Musk, which is at that point pretty much his boss. He was going to work for him. And Don Lemon doesn't have a job. 
right? So you ask Elon Musk about racism and this and that, how his platform is just causing division. People are dying. This, so Elon is clearly very uncomfortable. He answers the question as, much, as best as he can. And then right after the interview, Elon Musk says, the contract is off, you're fired. So Don Lemon gets fired again. This happened. So, all right. Um, Gregory, wow, I'm almost at three months waiting for mine to e-form. Okay, let's talk about suppressors. Let's get to it. And then we'll jump back into law uh, uh, some uh, political stuff again. I got a couple more things to tell you guys. Uh, wait, wait, what the... F I still don't like Kai. His jawline is too perfect, like a robot pretending to human perfect. I don't know if that's supposed to be a good thing. Like, is that a compliment or are you attacking me? But whatever it is, love you, bro. Moving on. <laughs> uh, that interview was more of an interrogation. I agree with you, Rascal. Absolutely. Um, what suppressor are you using for your 11.5? I actually don't have 11.5. I want to build one. I have my Sig Rattler LT, which is like 6.8 inch, like 300 blackout. I do use the uh, Q Trash Panda. Trash Panda is amazing, guys. I absolutely love that thing. Um, Kaya, don't smash my chick. Chris, I promise I won't because I have a girlfriend now. Yeah, boy. Guys, yes. Openly saying, I am no longer single. Kind of feels different because I've been single for so long. 11 years, let's just say. I had a three-month there, four-month there in the last 11 years. But my last long relationship was 11 years ago, guys. And uh, most recently, I met somebody. So it feels good. It feels good to kind of have those feelings kind of surface again because I've kind of hid them over the years. So they're back out. So not going to smash your uh, chick even if I wasn't dating someone, I still wouldn't because I'm a respectful guy, right? Okay. Uh, we're going to go back to suppressors unless we got a super chat. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. I'm excited. We'll see where it goes. Hopefully it goes somewhere. Um, oh, wait. We got a super chat. Jonathan Velez. Velez. Five bucks. Thanks, brother. Appreciate you. Did you mention New York City homeowner arrested for squatters or illegal immigrants have two area rights in Chicago, but U.S. citizens don't? Wait. I did not know this. First of all, thanks a lot for your uh, contribution to the channel. Did you mention New York City homeowner arrested for squatters or illegal immigrants have 2A rights in Chicago, but citizens don't? Wait, can you rephrase this? I don't understand. So you're saying illegal immigrants have Second Amendment rights in Chicago, but U.S. citizens don't? I thought it was... Okay, I thought the ridiculousness was this. Like, the illegal immigrants had as much rights as U.S. citizens. I didn't think it was more. I, I, I mean, if you guys have a link or anything like that, I can check it out. Let me see. I'm going to type over here. Illegal, illegal immigrants uh, have more rights. I mean, Chicago. Let me see. Oh, shit. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. All right, let's read this together. I'm going to share this screen. Hold on one sec. Guys, 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 and gals, stand by. Okay. I'm going to read this with you guys. Fuck. This is not good. Okay. Illinois judge rules illegal migrants can carry guns. Case involves Mexican man charged with a possession gun, possessing gun, Judge rules migrants can bear arms under Second Amendment. Decision sparks debate on constitutional rights. Dude, how funny is this? What? The, wait, wait. How funny is this that when it feeds their agenda, Second Amendment is now a very good thing. But when it is, when it feeds a conservative agenda, no, Second Amendment needs to be blocked. We got to ban this. We got to do this. We got to uh, pro prohibit this. This is not good. All right, hold on, hold on. Let me, uh, well, I don't, I don't want to get any copyright stuff, so I'm just going to read this. I'm not going to play the video. A federal judge uh, in Illinois earlier this month ruled that a Mexican man who was living in the United States legal, illegally had a constitutional right to own a firearm for self-defense. 
In her ruling, U.S. District Judge Sharon Johnson Coleman dismissed charges against Harry Berto, okay, moving on, who was arrested in 2020 for violating a federal law that prohibits undocumented immigrants from possessing guns. Whatever uh, contends that he received and used the handgun solely for self-protection and protecting protection of property during a time of documented civil unrest in the spring of 2020, the Northern District Illinois judge wrote in her ruling. Now, I'm going to tell you guys this. This may not be the popular opinion. Don't freaking attack me, please. I am a lover of Second Amendment as much as some of you guys don't like me because I used to be an FBI, an FBI agent because FBI confiscates guns, which I never did. I was a national security guy alone, literally overseas guy. But anyways, whether illegal or not, that's a different topic. Okay, somebody being here illegally, obviously I don't like that. I don't support that. I think immigration should be legal just the way I did it. However, I want to remove the illegal immigrant from the picture. I like, I like it any time when a citizen or a person, let's just say person, a person defends himself or herself with a gun, truly defends themselves, right? Not a thug. At home, you're sitting and somebody comes at you and you protect yourself with a gun because that always supports the importance of Second Amendment. So I don't have a problem with an illegal immigrant protecting himself or herself with a gun. We're doing it right, the right way. Now, some of you guys will not like this, but I got to be honest with you guys. You can have a stolen gun on you and you could be a dirtbag thug. When somebody comes at you and you shoot and kill that guy, you will char you'll be charged with a, a felon or you'll be charged with a uh, possession of a stolen gun. You won't be charged for killing the person because that was self-defense. You see what I'm saying? You could literally do that. I've seen that happen. Of course, some prosecutors will argue other stuff, but I've seen that happen. You could have a gun illegally on you and kill somebody with it during an actual cut and dry self-defense case. You won't go to jail for that uh, killing, but you probably will get charged for that illegal uh, possession of that gun. So, so for me, somebody being illegal in this country is a separate issue. An illegal person with a gun truly protecting himself or herself in a truly self-defense situation is a completely separate issue. I'm a proponent of anybody protecting themselves with a gun. That's a good thing. That's literally what we fight for. I'm not a proponent of illegal immigration. Okay. So let's see what else happened here. Uh, Johnson Coleman, uh, an appointee of former President Barack Obama cited that the summer of 2020 when unrest and violence swept across Chicago and other U.S. cities amid uh, protests over police brutality. Yeah, yeah, okay. Court documents shows uh, fired his handgun at moving vehicles. Oh, shit. Okay, this, this doesn't sound like a self-defense. Well, moving vehicles when he believed looters were approaching his neighborhood after police warned the potential threat. He had no prior criminal record that we know of. Justice Clarence Thomas, in the court's majority opinion regarding one gun, one gun rights case, emphasized that the Second Amendment's uh, protections extend to individual conduct, creating a presumption that applies regardless of legal status. However, Wu suggested that Congress could clarify the law to explic explicitly prohibit migrants from possession, possessing firearms. Hmm. What are your thoughts? Man, if I could do a poll here. Can I do a poll here? I wonder if I can do a poll here. Gosh, can I? I really want to know your thoughts on if illegal immigrants uh, should be able to protect themselves with a gun. Actual, legitimate self-defense is what I'm talking about. What are your thoughts? Chicago is a shy rack. I agree with you. You have started a heated debate politics. Bob? I love the politics. I think we should be able to talk and debate. You know, I, I don't know everything. I'd like to learn a few things from you guys. And I may just say, I may, I may be misinformed on certain, certain things. Perhaps our opinions won't match. Maybe I'll just change my opinion based on, maybe you'll just uh, convince me with some of the things that 
I don't believe in. I don't know. I'm all about talking, guys. Uh, what do you guys think? All right, Kevin, illegals should not be able to protect themselves. What do you guys think? Okay, what do you guys think? Should illegals be able to protect themselves? What are your thoughts? I want to know. The problem is where do they get the gun? They probably got the gun illegally, guys, obviously. But wait a minute. Is it, wait, wait, in, can't you go get a gun with just a uh, driver's license in Florida, right? You just like kind of get your license, just like, even North Carolina. Depends on the trust level. Why do you think the ruling supports the Democratic agenda, I wonder? Well, the reason I say that, because Democrats love the whole illegal immigration. They got no problem, the sanctuary cities. So now one of those people got charged with something or, or was involved in something like this, like a self-defense situation with a gun. So now they want to actually protect that agenda. In my opinion, that's what it is. Todd, not with a firearm in this country. Okay, all right. I'd like to hear your thoughts. They are illegal. Hold on. Uh, Patricia, they're illegal. They shouldn't have a gun in this country. They're illegally here. I agree with you. They shouldn't have a gun, right? Because that would be an illegal possession of a firearm. However... As I told you just a little bit, a uh, few minutes ago, you can illegally possess a gun. That's a crime. And you, with that illegally possessed gun, you actually have a full-blown legitimate self-defense. Someone is literally about to kill you and you just shoot and kill that person with that illegal gun. You technically won't be charged with murder or aggravated assault, or aggravated battery, whatever it is, because it was a legitimately justified case. But you probably be held accountable for the illegal possession of that firearm. Do you think that, okay, let me, let me change the topic to this. Somebody who's illegally possessing a firearm, illegally, should that person be able to protect themselves too with that firearm? There you go. Gilly Shooter, 4473 asks about illegal immigration status. Either way, this goes, there uh, stands to be some horseshit stemming from the ruling that negatively impacts regular gun owners. If they'd stop messing with our rights in the first place, we could have a better discussion. I agree with you, 100%. I agree with you. So 4473 asks you about illegal immigration. A lot of documents do, right? You know, whenever you do something official, they ask your legal status here. So I would be, if I was a betting man, this illegal immigrant gentleman, it got the gun, obviously, not legally, you know? McNaw dog, how could you, when I want to buy a new gun, I have to show ID, sign four paper, pages of paperwork, and 16 days of background check. If they have none of that, how would this work? Well, uh, <laughs> that's, I agree with you. It, it, illegal immigrants either have somebody else's identity, which is a crime on it in itself again, uh, or they just simply possess the gun illegally. Kevin, they are illegal. <laughs> Kevin is pretty passionate. I get it, dude. I get it. Hey, I'm on your side. Uh, they're not supposed to be here anyways, and you want these goons walking around with a gun. Most of them are criminals. No, 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 no. I don't want them walking around with a gun. That's also illegal, right? I'm just saying if there is a case that you showed me that someone illegal, whatever, but there was a legitimate case, right? I mean, like, let me give you a very black and white example. There's a dude sitting at home eating his popcorn. And thugs just fucking kick the door in with guns, get in, and they're just going to kill him or whatever, rape him, something like that. And this dude who is illegal eating his popcorn just grabs his gun and just pop, pop, and drops one of those thugs. I personally, right there, in my opinion, that supports the self-defense that guns do save lives, not necessarily take lives kind of thing. Like, I think that supports the narrative that you can use a gun to save your own life that a lot of times people say, why do you need a gun? Call the police, right? That's, the, my mind goes there, guys. 
of course, I don't support illegals being here, and nor do I support them being here with a gun. I don't. I was just simply isolating a specific part of this specific case. So I believe, uh, like, you should be able to defend yourself. I don't give a shit who you are. Like, I, I'm with you. Okay, so let's open this up a little bit. I'm with you. Somebody shouldn't be here illegally, right? They shouldn't be illegal. Let me shut this thing down right here. I agree The they shouldn't be here illegally. They should come here legally. I came here legally, guys. 20 years ago, I immigrated here, okay? I, I wasn't born here. I came here legally. I'm a U.S. citizen. I've been a U.S. citizen for 13, 14 years, whatever it has been. I've served the U.S. government. I've served the, the, this country for over 10 years. Proud of it. Still doing my part. I've lived the American dream. I still do to this day. It's an incredible country. I'm a fucking proud American. Got it? So I don't condone illegal immigration. I don't condone illegally carrying guns and all that stuff. I don't do that stuff. But I will always support anyone legitimately defending themselves. Because I feel like we all have this God-given right to defend ourselves, right? It's just mankind's God-given right. I should be able to defend myself. Illegality, of course, that's not good. That's a different thing. The, perhaps not charge the guy with a murder, but charge him with the gun possession and also being here illegally, deport him or something, right? I mean, that's, what I, that's where I'm going. <clears throat> well, Todd, with a baseball bat. Okay, Todd, let me ask you a question. Uh, this, this goes straight to Todd. And let's have a discussion on this one. If the government came to you today and said, you know what? We're changing the laws. Average citizens can no longer possess a gun, but they can use a baseball bat. You wouldn't like that, right? Because you can't defend yourself with a fucking baseball bat. And I know it's a kind of an absurd uh, example, but people should be able to defend themselves in any ways they can. I feel like every case is an individual. They're all, they have their own circumstances. If an illegal immigrant had a gun, shot and killed a person, and you look at that specific case, this is the cop in me that comes out now. You look at that specific case, the case clearly shows, holy shit, this guy truly just protected himself and his wife. Like it's a clear cut self-defense case. Fine. You don't charge him with that murder or killing. You charge them with illegal possession of a firearm. You charge them for, or, and you get involved, the federal is involved for being here illegally and perhaps get the process started on deportation. I believe he shouldn't be charged with a fucking uh, murder or killing somebody uh, crime. I, I, what do you guys think? Should, should that they be? I, mean, I, I don't know. I'm just, I just want to talk. Maybe I'm wrong here. Maybe I'm just not seeing a different point of view and I'd love to uh, learn from you guys. I agree with you on the last on your last point of deportation. Of course, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying oh, illegals should be here; they can have a gun. Protect. I'm not saying any of that stuff. They shouldn't have a gun. They shouldn't freaking be here. And if they get involved with something with that gun, the case should be looked at individually. If it's justified, fine. You're good there, but you got a gun illegally. That's one thing, and you're here illegally. Get out. So. There you go. Dillagaff, all guns laws are unconstitutional. Immigration status is a separate issue. The, the guy should have been deported once he was arrested, not for the gun, but for being here illegally. I agree with you. That's it. 100%. He should have been deported. Yeah. Matt, I agree with what you're saying, Kaya. Well said. Thanks, brother. Appreciate you. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. J5619, what if the gun has bodies on it? Therefore, the, that person would get charged for those crimes too. Well, not, not necessarily, okay? As a person, I used to, I, I'm actually from Chicago, guys, and I was a crime scene investigator for the Illinois State Police because I, I was a trooper there. And right before I went to the FBI, I actually served as a detective for a year, investigator. 
<clears throat> in the crime services uh, uh, command. And dude, there's so much investigations that go in to crimes. So I can have a gun in my hand and that gun was involved in three murders, three separate murders. And I'm just walking down the street and boom, I get caught with that gun on me, right? That doesn't mean I'm going to get charged with three murders. There's so many things that go into investigations. Time and date, where was I, location history. I mean, I can just go on and on. So many things involved. If they can put all of those things together, they can create this map that I was indeed involved with those things and they can support that with evidence, not just the fucking gun, right? Then I most likely won't be charged. They just won't have enough to go on in court. So... All right, uh, but Sean right here, Sean Spears, uh, be able to protect you and yours by any means, deport illegal people that cause a problem. If they come here, make them pay taxes and everything that we have to do, maybe even extra tax. I agree, but I'm a believer in this, guys. This migration issue is so complex. Um, I. I will continue to say this. I don't support illegal immigration and I don't like the whole word undocumented. Guys, when I say undocumented versus illegal, I'm not just being oh, all nice to the person. Undocumented, is same shit. Illegal, undocumented, same thing. It's a crime. It's a crime to violate that law. Therefore, you're a criminal. Criminal, as I said before, if you guys are new here, some of the guys who just tuned in, just because you are a criminal doesn't mean you're a bad person. I've met a lot of criminals throughout my career. Amazing fucking people. Good people. Better than you and me. They just caught them. because They just got caught up uh, in, a, in a bad situation, found themselves in a, a wrong uh, place, let's just say. So not always a bad thing. And not everybody who comes here illegally are bad people. I've met some amazing illegal immigrants in this country, right? But that does, that's besides the point. We have laws. We have to enforce them. Nobody should take this personally. I can meet a mom and a daughter. They're amazing. But sorry, we have to enforce this freaking law. If we can't just cherry pick. But I understand currently there's 11 to 15 million immigrants in this country, illegal, illegal immigrants in this country. If I was obviously going to do something about it, I would start <clears throat> absolutely from... Anybody who's involved in crimes or anything, in gangs and stuff like that. Start from those. Start chopping those things before you go to Maria's at a hotel, clean rooms. So moving on. Let's see what we got. Jonathan Velez, $2. Thanks, brother. Appreciate you. New York PD arrested legal homeowner for squatters. What do you, what? Hold on. Let me, let me find that too. Okay. NYPD. Man, we were going to talk suppressors, but we will get there. Arrested uh, homeowners. Oh, fuck, I can't type. Homeowners for squatters. Oh shit. Okay, let's 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 get to this, guys. Jonathan, thank you, man. Let's. Um, I'm gonna read with you guys. All right. Share screen. Uh, okay, fuck this. All right. New York City homeowner arrested after heated disagreement with squatters claiming tenant rights in uh, one million. Oh, man. Okay. In one million home. It's ads. A New York City homeowner was arrested for unlawful eviction after arguing with squatters who, she says, stole her one million home, dollar home, uh, last month. What the heck? The New York Police Department took Adele, um, okay, I can't say that name, 47 years old, into custody after she attempted to change the locks on her Queens property that, yeah, you can't do that, guys. I know that, uh, that she inherited following her parents' deaths. Uh, reported on Monday, standoff between Andaloro and the squatters occurred on February 29. Okay, I'm going to read this uh, rest of it for you guys. But guys, um, yeah, when I was a police officer, we have I've dealt with a lot of evictions, a lot of this landlord-tenant disputes. They were just the least pleasurable calls to go to. Guys, it sucks to be a home homeowner nowadays, uh, especially if you guys remember the pandemic. You couldn't evict anybody during pandemic, brother. 
anybody. You got a home that you pay $500,000 and you rely on that rent, right? You, you know, $3,000 a month rent, let's just say. Your tenant could be like, I can't afford it. I got laid off. I can't work, whatever, COVID. For a whole year or two, nothing was going to happen. You couldn't evict anybody. That's the system, guys. The government owns you by the balls, right? Like that. You can't. So right here, clearly, it looks like an ongoing issue. When you go change the lock. So when somebody lives in a property, you can own it. But it's their property now. They're not the legal owners, but they reside in there. So they have a lot of rights to that property. You can't just evict them. You have to go through the eviction process. The court has to approve. You got to go to court. They have to approve it. You got to win that case. And then the deputies, the county sheriff's deputies, are assigned to this eviction. The, the, the notice is given. Like there's a lot of freaking uh, hoops that you got to jump. Then you go, you can change the locks. You can throw their stuff out and all. You can do like forcible eviction. But that's a process. In the wintertime, a lot of judges won't even give any eviction notices because what are you going to do? You're going to throw them out in the wintertime, right? And uh, depending on the climate, the, the state that you're in. But in New York City, clearly, obviously, New York City is all a very, very, very left uh, city. Um, clearly, the person did not go through the proper eviction channels or maybe did and lost. I don't know what's going on there, which we'll read. Just went and changed the locks. When you do that, yes, guys, you are violating the law. If you don't like it, change the freaking law. But that's it. You violated the law and you're going to get arrested for that. That sucks. In New York City, squatters can claim tenant rights. Okay, there you go. Here we are. We're talking about laws here. Squatters uh, can claim tenant rights after living on a property for 30 days. This tenant protection law is more generous than uh, the one in New York statewide law. There we go. New York City obviously is way more radical, uh, <clears throat> which requires squatters to remain on property on a property for 10 years before gaining such rights. What? Okay, so New York State, the state law says they have to live there for 10 years before they have such crazy rights. But in New York City, 30 days. Um, a squatter can refer... A squatter refers to any person who unlawfully occupies an uninhabited building without the landlord's permission. Oh, wait. Shit. I, mi I totally missed the squatter part. Sorry. I was, I've been talking about the tenant stuff. If somebody squats, they shouldn't have any rights to it. Totally. I totally missed that part. If somebody squats in a freaking property, they shouldn't have any rights to it. Just get the fuck out. Get the fuck out. What? You can squat in a freaking... Wait, uh, under New York City law, homeowners cannot change the lock switch, utilities, remove personal items, belongings. Okay, tenants. Yes, you can't do that to tenants unless you go through proper channels. The law was created in part to fill cities vacant and abandoned buildings with people who previously loitered on the streets. However, squatters have taken advantage of it. Uh, while trying to sell her home, she f uh, said she first noticed the problem in February when the doors and locks were changed. I'm really fearful that these people are going to get away with stealing my home. She said in a video to evict a squatter. Oh, shit, guys, I'm sorry. This is a squatter. I've been thinking this was a tenant. Shit. This is crazy. A squatter goes into your abandoned property or empty property. They can just get in and change the locks. And they actually have a right. Fucking mind blown, guys. Mind blown. Can somebody just make sense this? The, the, make sense, make this make sense to me, please. I'm gonna read the comments. Somebody goes into your property. It's your home. You just your tenants moved out. You try to rent it or sell it. It's just empty for a couple of months. Some asshole just gets in and changes the lock, and he fucking owns the place now. That's called trespassing in the better majority of states. Yeah, it's called criminal trespass of a property. Okay, I want to know. Okay, this makes fucking no sense. 
and this person got arrested. I've been thinking this is a tenant, landlord tenant thing. Wait a minute. And creates a fake lease paper. Well, that's a fucking offense. You know, that's called forgery. It's a felony. No, 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 no. That attack you creates fake documents. You actually uh, have you have actually violated criminal statutes. Again, I don't know all state laws. I was I know Illinois laws pretty well. I used to know a lot better, obviously, and some federal laws, of course, as uh, as a former Fed that you guys love. <laughs> okay. Gilly shooter breaking and entering comes to mind. Maybe a little trespassing and wouldn't. Uh, wouldn't theft a million fall a million dollars fall under one or one of the more aggressive forms of theft? Well, it's, it's this is insane. I want to read more. Hold on. Okay, hey, let's read this part. To evict a squatter, to evict a squatter, property owner must send a ten day eviction notice. What? No, get the fuck out. I'm gonna come to my fucking house. I'll beat the living shit out of you and get the fuck out of my property. That's how you evict a squatter. At least what? How could you just get into my property, break in my own property, and I got to just serve you some fucking document? Who fucking came up with this? Whoever, listen, whoever came up with this, we should go and break into their place and just live there. This is insane. This is freaking insane. The problem is, Chris, uh, the problem is squatters have just as much rights to the property as tenants, owners in some cases. How? Listen, bro, I enforced laws in this country for 10 freaking years. I've read a lot of laws. I've been to court many freaking times. I've dealt with a shit ton of squatters. A shit ton of squatters when I was in Rockford Police Department. How? Like... How? How? Like, I understand you can just get in there. You can establish residency. Oh, Your Honor, I had no place to go, whatever. How, how could you just be in there and you can't get that squatter out? What kind of law allows that? My mind doesn't, you know, it just makes no sense to my mind. Whether I'm right or wrong doesn't matter. This shit makes no sense to me. You guys let me know. How would you feel if your property was violated by squatters and they trespass in there. You can't get them out. You never had an agreement. With tenants, you have an agreement. You sign a lease, they get in there, and then some problems happen. They lose their job. Some shit happens. They can't pay the rent. Then, hey, you got to go through the proper channels. But squatters? How are they any different than somebody breaking into your car? And just, just imagine you're outside. You walk, literally, you just get to your car Someone just broke the window and they're sitting in your car. Like, what happens? Well, that fucker gets arrested for that. How is it not the same for homes? Let me look at the uh, Jonathan Vela's mom dies. They squad. She's still responsible for utilities, mortgage, etc. Yes, this is insane. And thanks a lot for the uh, five bucks, brother. Appreciate you. Uh, Okay. Uh, seen some videos where the owner shuts the uh, water water and power off and they get sued. Well, if it's a tenant, yes. On a squatter, that's your property. Wait, you're going to squat my property? And I'm going to pay your fucking water and electric bill? Uh, Cav Cop, uh, just show up with some friends and firearms to your property. Ask squatters if they are drug users or felons that can't be around firearms. <laughs> and then start asking squatters if they are st staring and... What? Um, Mike Smith, uh, Kai, I'm in North Carolina. I work for a property management company. It took, it took us seven months to evict this... Seven months to evict a squatter. Okay, so dude, Mike, I want to know the circumstances. I really, please type, brother. I want to know 
why it took that long, there's got to be some backstory to this. Like if there's an abandoned property, you haven't claimed your property, some guy went in there because, oh, your honor, I was going to die on the streets. It was cold. And you've just been living there for months. Nobody checked. Nobody checked the property. And suddenly some guy shows up. Hey, this is my property. And then, hey, your honor, I've been living here for six months. Maybe there's some gray area there that they just try to fight it off. Um, even then, it doesn't make sense to me. You get the fuck out. But shit. I want to know the circumstances on this one, Mike. As an American citizen, I have the right to defend myself and my property. Yeah, yeah, we do. I mean, theoretically on paper. <sighs> Wait a minute. Uh, crunchy, let me actually shut this thing down. Uh, somebody decides to break into my truck and squat. We're going to have a chat in the field about what's going to happen next. Yeah, same here. I mean, same here. Jonathan, ask Waters if they are bulletproof after stealing my grandma's house from my mom. Well, I mean, I guess you'll find out if they are. They mess with you if they try to threaten you, right? With your life. Uh, what else? Let's see what else you guys are talking about. Like, this is insane. We were talking about illegal immigrants owning guns and this to the freaking squatters. There's some insane laws out there. I don't understand this, guys. I freaking don't understand at all. Um, what else? What are your thoughts? Okay. <laughs> Should people just get into these abandoned properties and live there, squat there, and then the homeowner... like, oh, okay, let me, okay, let me rephrase this. Should squatters have any rights... I want to know, guys. Can you guys write in the comment section, should squatters have any rights when it comes to owner just getting them out? I'm curious because I may just be very narrow-minded on this one because this makes no sense to me. I, I want to hear some of, you, some of you guys' comments. Maybe you'll change my mind on certain, certain things or maybe you'll shed a light from a different perspective for me. No rights to your property. No, no. Everybody says no. I'm really looking for that one yes that could try to make sense to it to this. Not any rise towards property they're squatting in. Hmm. Get them out. Made to protect. Okay. Nope. Squatters have no right. Okay. All right. So you guys are with me on this one. Okay. How about this? If a squatter goes into an abandoned building, abandoned home, and they've been living there for six months, nobody checked on them. The guy just literally just created his life there. For six months. And then boom, the owner shows up. Should should that squatter or those squatters have any rights? Should those squatters have any rights? I want to know. Um, <laughs> squatters get the warning shots. Chris, uh, the most common circumstance I saw was previous tenants stopped paying the rent. That's not a squatter. Those are tenants. They have rights. Squatters' rights, as much as I hate the title sounds, was more towards the legion tenants who were renting, leasing, but when the wind got out, everyone calls it a hack. No, that's still not a squatter. You know? So you guys are all saying no rights. That's what I'm saying too, like squatters. When I was reading this uh, article, I was like, okay, wait a minute, guys. Hey, take it easy. The tenants have rights. I was trying to freaking tell you guys certain things, and then boom, it hit me. It's a freaking squatter. I totally missed that part. Okay. God damn, this is freaking crazy. Wow. So who do you guys think is going to take the presidency this uh, uh, six months from now? What is it, six months? How many, how many months do we have? Uh, do, do, do. Yeah, three. Yeah, six months. Yeah, I think we've all, you know, we've been beating the dead horse with the squatter things. They should, this is a ridiculous law. Note to self, don't freaking buy a property in New York City. I can't afford anyways, but if I could, or if anybody watching this can, don't freaking mess with uh, uh, New York City. So... Who's going to take the presidency this uh, November 5th? I, seriously, I'm curious. 
first of all, do you guys think Trump is going to get there? Like, will they try to prevent, put him in jail? Even he can do that from jail, obviously. What do you think? Do you think actually Biden is going to be the final candidate? It seems to be so far. Um, who's going to take it? Do you think Biden or Trump? I'm going to look at the uh, general election polls right now. General election uh, polls right now, 2024. This was, what? when was this? All right, the conversation. I'm looking at some uh, poll data right now. I think Trump is, I think Trump is going to take this, guys. I really think so. I think Trump is leading the polls. Have you guys noticed that Trump actually was not leading Biden up until he got indicted? If you look at the charts, on any charts, if you look at him, Trump was polling less than Biden by a few points. As soon as he got indicted, Biden went down, Trump went up. As soon as that happened. Unhealthy salad. Thank you. Thank God you weren't with Clint when he went live and busted my build. You would have good. You would have gave given me a five for no sling and light. Hey, hey, man, don't hate me for wanting a light and sling on a rifle. It's important. Okay, it's important. We had a light. Actually, you know what? We had a debate on the uh, last video, and it's a kind of a stupid debate. Would you put a light before a sling or sling before a light? For me, they are both equally important, right? But when we play this stupid hypothetical game, well, pick one, pick one. Like, why would I pick one, right? I would, I will just fucking put both. I said sling. Obviously, the guys disagreed. They said light. And I see their point, of course. Light's very important. Positive identification of a target is paramount, right? But at the same time, I, I, dude, I don't, I want positive control of my rifle. I want control, positive control of my rifle, in my environment, I don't even need a light. I live in a city. My house, when, even when you turn all the lights off, it's, you can see everything. There's city lights coming in. I guess your environment does dictate big time, especially like Jason was saying. Jason had a really good point. If you have a kid in the house or some other people, dude, you might want to have that light to identify. I get it. I think there are no wrong answers. But um, yeah, I went with sling. So, so German Viking. What's up, Kaya? How's it going, man? Good seeing you. Um, let's see. What else you got? Not hating. Just haven't gotten it yet. Dude, get it. Do you know what sling you guys should get? I'm going to tell you straight up, guys. I, I, wish, I can't show guns here, man. Damn it. Like in my hands. Neil McLean, man. McLean Core uh, USA. You guys, it's a sling. I've uh, Fuck, you know what? Let me see if I can actually sh show this. I uh, probably can't. Let me see. Uh, switch. Can I switch? No. Nah. Okay. Unfortunately, I can't. All right. Well, anyways, Neil McLean sling guy. It's a it's a uh, dynamic retention sling. It's a single point sling when you're operating right. Easy to switch shoulders, whatever. And I know single point. Not everybody likes it because when you let it go, let it hang. It dangles. It whatever. Right. But when you actually let it hang, you got this little hook right here you just hook it on the uh, gun so you get this two point thing close to your body you can just make it real tight you can throw it in your back you can run obstacle courses uh, climb on ladders fantastic sling i run that and i also run the uh uh ferro concept uh sling um t -t -t. my buddy's macbull sling is pretty slick Matt, I mean, it's cool. Magpul is obviously not bad. I don't like them, man. I feel like they're just not for me. It's too robust, too stiff. Kaya, I bet Trump runs a suppressor. I don't think so, man. If I had to guess, Trump would just go with a full three-prong break. Let them all hear it. He's wild like that. I don't think he'd just be a suppressor kind of guy. He'd be like, bang, 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 let the whole world hear it. His personality doesn't, I feel like he's a break guy. <laughs> so, um, 
But seriously, if you guys try the uh, Neil McLean uh, dynamic retention sling, you guys are going to love it. Fuck, can I, like, is there a video on it? Let me see. I'd love to show it to you guys. I know I, wait, I actually did show. Wait, I'm going to go to the Classic Firearms. I actually talked about the uh, sling at the Shit Hits the Fan. Uh, uh, what is that thing? Uh, shit Hits the Fan video that we did. Right. There we go. There you go, guys. We're going to watch this together right now. In fact, this is the highest watch section. Wait, 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 wait. Check this out. Right here. Share screen. I go right here. Okay. Video's sound is going to be higher than mine, but let me put this thing down a little bit. All right. So. And I, I think I'm seeing a gold setup as well. So you want to tell us about setup. this? Yeah. You tell us about this? So this is my ADM, the uh, 13.9 pin and welded, Surefire RC2. I've got a cloud, cloud defensive uh, light with a EOTech Voodoo. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a uh, eight power, mm -hmm. and I've got a Mac mount with an offset with a Mac dot, uh, forty-five degrees right there. Mm -hmm. I know we talked about the uh, twelve o'clock, and you know what? The more I think about it, I absolutely uh, think twelve o'clock is better. Okay. I'm gonna We're gonna talk about sling now. I, and this was good, but then you well cheap placement. Uh, dynamic there you go. That. Here's so the sling, guys. With the uh, McLean uh, dynamic retention sling oh, right here, which is that's why you're able to. It's a single point, but the hybrid. You got this little hook. You just go to right here, and you're like this. You can actually tighten it up, just like that. Keep it very close to you. If you got to run, hike, throw it in your back, climb up stairs, and if you want to get back in a fight, you just simply grab this. Comes right off, and you're back in the fight and then it acts as a single point we've got a, a great yeah. video covering that with yeah so there's that guys what do you think what do you think about that i freaking love neil mclean mclean course sling it's incredible dude when you're in a house it's actually loose because and when you also reload too like you you shoot you look you're empty you bring the gun up when you reload no sling gets in the way for you i understand two point have obviously its place single point uh, have its place and uh, the pros and cons. Uh, but Neil kind of created this, well, he perfected, let's just say, this hybrid system and came up with this. I think it's incredible. I love it. I think, that, I believe Classic carried them. Uh, you, guys, I, you, guys, you guys can check the uh, Classic Firearms uh, site, see if we still have them. I think we had very limited stuff in the, on the, uh, in, the, in the inventory. I have like three of them myself, you know? Neil McLean, McLean, M C L E A N, but he's McLean. So, um, Furnage, uh, what do you currently conceal carry? What I carry is Springfield Hellcat Pro. That's what I got. Hector Gonzalez, awesome. Neil McLean, totally worth it. I agree, guys. And by the way, that sling is 80 bucks. I think somewhere right around 80 bucks. So, freaking, it's not even all that expensive. It's pretty good. And you don't want, guys, when you're building your set kit, please don't go cheap on some of these uh, vital, vital uh, accessories. Do not go cheap on them. Save your money. Get the right stuff. Okay? Uh, it's going to serve you in the long run. So. J5619, that's pretty dope, though. The last time I looked, they were out of stock at their website. I mean, I'm going to look at Classic Firearms, see if we have him. Let's see. And by the way, again, tomorrow, the IWA German chat show, I went there with Ryan. Tomorrow, our first video is coming out Enforce, from Enforce TAC. Uh, if you guys are interested, it's it's pretty good. Trust me. I, I, I like it a lot better than chat show. Let's see. Uh, McLean. Oh, there you go, dude. Bro, we have him. Yeah. Check it out. Here it is. Classic has him on, on, uh, in stock, guys. Right here. This is the sling, you know. And Classic actually has uh, uh, McLean. Let me see. 
Yeah, look, there's four colors, black, um, multicam, FDE, and Ranger Green. And looks like all of them are in stock. Guys, I'd totally get my hands on these, 100%. If, if you have a rifle and you want to know, uh, you want to get a good sling on it, totally. This, this is what I run. This is what I run. I also run Ferro Concept, by the way, two point. But on my uh, Sig Rattler LT, and I run uh, McLean on other stuff. Anyways, this was a little shameless plug for you guys, but truly not because it's classic. I truly use it, like it, and I share it with you guys. So there's that. And it was less than 80 bucks, so 75 bucks. Good to go. Ryan, 199. Thanks, brother. Appreciate you. By the way, anybody who's tuning in now, appreciate you guys. Appreciate supporting the channel. And uh, I was gone for three weeks to Germany with Ryan. We did... We were there for like nine days shooting the European SHOT Show, Enforce Tech, Law Enforcement, Military Only Show, and then the IWA, which is like European SHOT Show. We did that. And then I went to Istanbul, Turkey, kind of visited some family, did some business for my own brand a little bit too at the same time. And then uh, now I'm back. I literally got back like three, four days ago. And this is my first live stream since three weeks. And uh, we do this pretty much every Wednesday when I can at 7 p.m. Eastern, FYI. Um, Brandy, Kyle, what's your in, uh, IG, Instagram? Well, Brandy, it's right here. Instagram at the bottom left corner, copper, Kaya, like copper, like a metal, Kaya. Now, the reason I went with copper, you know, it's a police thing. Like, oh, my brother's a copper in North Carolina, right? That's kind of what I went with. I didn't want to use any underscore dot or any of those nonsense stuff, right? I wanted to have a clean name, so I use Copper Kaya. That's my Instagram. If you guys are interested, you can follow me. I have my main Instagram, but which is mainly in Turkish language. That's where I got some followers. But Copper Kaya is something that I just recently started, and I just do exclusively English content, obviously, like I do here, and uh, kind of build that one up a little bit. So if you're interested, that's all. Steve, uh, Kai, how's your family in Turkey? They're doing great, man. Thanks for asking. Appreciate you. They're... Uh, I love visiting them ever since I left the bureau. Because when I was in the FBI, guys, I couldn't really always go. Like, it's just one of those things that you can go once a year, but you got to ask permission because I still have top secret security clearance to this day. And obviously, you got to go through the security division. You got to ask permission. Hey, I'm going to go right here. Then you, you basically talk about some risks, whatever it may be, the region that you're going to. It was just like a little hassle. And you go visit your family for 10 days and then you don't see them again for a year. Thank God after I left the Bureau, I'm able to go see my family like three, four times a year. I spent all my money pretty much on tickets and the money that I spent down there, but it's well freaking worth it. And now I got a girlfriend over in Turkey as well. She's English, but she lives in Istanbul. Now that means I got to go there more. Damn it. Spent all my money. So moving on. Thanks for asking, uh, Steve. Appreciate you. Hasman the Great Kaya, what's your favorite EDC gun belt? I'm going to be honest with you. I run a good old leather belt. That's it. And I I like to wear my belts tight. Like my battle belts, when I was on duty, I always, I'm a proponent of all your gear to be very tight. Guys, I've been in so many foot pursuits in my career. If you have, or fights, if you have anything loose, things just start falling around. It throws off your balance. When things are tight and nice, you're good to go. It's much better. It stays on you. So I highly recommend uh, you to keep things very tight. So I use a regular belt, but I keep it pretty tight, so it, it's just fine. Dicko Brown Shorts, when are you marrying? It's pretty soon. Uh, well, no, not marrying pretty soon. It's too soon to talk about that. We'll see. Um, so long distance relationship, make it work. Hey, I have fully acknowledged the risks of this whole long distance thing. I've accepted the risks. She did the same. We'll see if it survives. We'll do my part, let's just say. John, between the uh, law enforcement or the FBI, which one was the best career? They all had their own good and bad sides. Now I'm going to go over my quickly my LE career because I've done local state state investigations and FBI. When I was a local police officer, I my city was at that time ranked the most violent city in America per capita. Like it was number 1 for like 3 years and then it went down to number 5, Rockford, Illinois. Check it out. 
It was amazing. The brotherhood, the camaraderie. It was the best times of my life, guys. I love those guys to this day. Rockford, Illinois Police Department. Shout out to those guys. Amazing guys. The best detectives out there. To this day, they're like family to me. Some of those guys. And they will always be that way. When it comes to kicking doors, getting into action, fights, chases, adrenaline, adrenaline, adrenaline. Rockford PD, man. It taught me so much. I got so much experience when it comes to dealing with people, seeing nasty shit, funny stuff. Rockford PD. Today, when I sit down and tell you guys some war stories, let's just say, whatever you call it, most of them will come from Rockford PD times. Now, when I joined the Illinois State Police and became a trooper, that was the job that I liked the most because I was able to do whatever the heck I wanted. I had this huge district. I I was kind of left alone. And I'm one of those guys, man. As I got older, I realized that I don't like tight spaces, like even figuratively, right? I like to spread my wings. When I was a local guy, one of the things that I struggled with, and that's that was on me, I, I, I didn't like to be just confined in a little beat. Like if I wanted to get Chipotle, which was like five miles away, I wanted to leave that beat and go get my Chipotle and come back. Well, that wasn't always well-received because I have calls to handle there and I go there, somebody else takes a paper, it's not good, right? As a trooper, I just did whatever I wanted. I was left alone, nobody told me anything, I was the boss. The car went home with me, the paperwork went home with me, I barely saw my boss. It was like, when it, when it comes to freedom, I had the freedom and I loved those days. And the entire state recognizes you because you're the trooper, right? I hated every second of the investigations that I did because I was a crime scene investigator. So I was at the morgue all the time, dealing with dead bodies all the time. It wasn't for me. I've seen a lot of dead bodies. I've stood on top of a lot of dead bodies. I've had people die in my arms and uh, gave their last breath. It's just not for me. I can do it, but it's just something that I don't enjoy. Uh, but I learned a lot about processing crime scenes, evidence, the detective work, a ton of stuff. Now, from there, the FBI, by far the coolest job I've ever had as the FBI, FBI being a special agent for the FBI, because first of all, the Quantico was mind blowing. I've finished three law enforcement academies, guys, local law enforcement academy. I finished a full blown Marine Corps type boot camp, six months, shaved head, drill every morning, salute, all that crap, Illinois State Police Academy. Then I finished FBI Academy in Quantico, Virginia, like about five, six months. The FBI did everything science space. It was a ladies and gentlemen's academy. It was a fucking bunch of smart people, good people, right? And science-based training, teaching, it was amazing. And then you get to your a field office, you see the U.S. government kind of moves a little slow, but you, the powers of the U.S. government, the things the U.S. government can do, especially in my unit, the counterintelligence, where you're like, oh, shit, the USG can do some really, really cool things. And I can never talk about a lot of that stuff. Um, but the coolness of the stuff I did in the FBI was just like up there. But I hated being behind a computer most of the time. I'm kind of one of those hands-on guys, right? I mean, I could do a little computer stuff, but let me get out a little bit. So I didn't like the whole, a lot of office stuff of the Bureau. But when we did ops, it was amazing. I loved it. That was, that's what I lived for. So, so there's that. That's my experience when it comes to uh, those things. I've done all three of them. Sometimes I kind of think myself to myself, I'm like, hey, man, I should have stayed at the local PD a little longer or state police or this. Gain more experience but then I wouldn't have gotten the other experiences. So you can have a 20 year career or 30 year career in local law enforcement, but you'll never have the FBI agent experience or a state trooper experience. So I've had all those, so I have no regrets. I didn't become an expert on being a local cop or trooper or FBI, but I got enough experience and training to uh, kind of know what I'm doing. And I've held those positions and titles. So there is the pride of that. Uh, so there's that. <laughs> Jessica, you're like the coolest special ops style copper. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. 
I want Chipotle. Dude, I want some Chipotle too. I really do. Fuck. Yeah. Um, JC, thank you for your service, brother. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you guys. A lot of people just think on the channel that, oh, he's FBI. He's, screw this guy. Guys, I understand. Listen, if anybody needs to hate the FBI, because I left the FBI due to some political bullshit they pulled on me, okay? If anybody needs to hate the FBI, it's me. You're looking at them. And I don't hate the FBI because I've seen some amazing people in the FBI. I'm going to say this openly, no matter how much this bothers some people, there are some amazing, mo vast majority of FBI agents are actually good freaking people. They're dirtbags in there, just like in any other organization. I left because of dirtbags in the FBI, okay, guys? Because of them. But there are amazing people in the FBI. There's some amazing agents that truly believe the, uh, the Constitution, the rights of the people, they have the integrity, they hold, uphold, uh, uphold their oath. There are agents that are coming, like whistleblowers coming out, right? They just, if the Bureau is doing something maybe not necessarily right, right, they, they'll go against them. These people exist. So you hating on any organization across the board just makes you less credible in my opinion. So I don't hate them all. I just acknowledge that they're not perfect. I acknowledge there are some assholes, dirtbags in them. But I also acknowledge there are some good people in there. And I was I work for them. Like one of my best friends, brother, like we, we are this close, is an FBI agent. We used to work together. He is, the if you guys met him, every single one of you guys, he's the most amazing guy ever. Like he, I, I, I look up to him. I wish I could be 10% of that guy and I'm never going to be. Because he's that awesome. Uh, so they're amazing. There's some really, really good people in the FBI. Um, and there are some bad people. I, so I don't hate the organization. I hate some of those executive management, some people who make certain decisions in the name of politics. I don't like those people. So there's that. Got to keep it honest. So... J5, uh, I like your perspective on classified firearms. Thanks, brother. Appreciate you. And at Classic Firearms, guys, we all bring different personalities, different backgrounds. I bring mine. You know, what I bring, nobody else can bring, right? And what somebody else bring, I can't bring that when it comes to personality, experience, and all that. Together, we are strong. And together, we can get, bring uh, the best content for you guys. There's no one person at Classic that just runs the Classic, right? It's There's a bunch of us in front of the camera. We just do our own thing. We show you guys. We provide certain contents for you guys. Hopefully you guys enjoy and uh, get educated in the meantime. So, so there's that. Every group of people that is large enough will show all levels of people from scumbags to superheroes. Just hope they have ways to weed out the bad ones instead of covering them. Well, I'll tell you this, man. That's very true. The FBI shit the bed when it comes to the way they treated me. And then right after they treated me like that, just a few short months after, they're like, oh, shit, we shit the bed with that guy. We should have screwed over the other person who was a corrupt one. So, unfortunately... The FBI, if it doesn't fit them, their narrative politically, they'll go with the other thing. So this is what I don't like about the FBI, and I say this openly. It's fucking political. If something, if somebody is completely innocent, but that person being innocent of whatever that is comes out, and that doesn't fit their political narrative... They'll fuck that guy over. They'll fuck that guy over. So innocence is an illusion. That's what I experienced in the FBI. And that's what I hate about the FBI. But it's not the whole FBI. It's just a few assholes made that call. So not everybody in the FBI is like this. There's some amazing people in the FBI. So I, I have to keep it honest. So. Uh, comments on the FBI or other agencies being weaponized against Trump. I don't know the internals of this, but it does look like the Justice Department is going after Trump on political reasons. Like, I'll tell you this. 
Jack Smith, the special prosecutor. Let's just be honest. The DOJ policy says your prosecutors cannot be involved in any politics. They can't make decisions based on politics. Jack Smith went to Supreme Court. He's like, hey, you guys need to hear this before the election. So he just basically cornered himself. He shot himself in the foot. Because if you ask him why, well, because it needs to happen before the election so people see, people see the truth. That's not your fucking job, Mr. Smith. Now you're involving politics. Now you're trying to affect the election. You may be right. You may be right. Maybe people have a right to know if Trump has committed all those crimes. That's a separate issue. That is not Jack Smith's deal. That's against DOJ policies. You, you, oh, I need to do this before. You know, he kind of cornered himself there. He can't get out of it. He just clearly showed that he was being political there. So there's that. Uh, probably not the super popular opinion here, but I had a friend go to jail for a wire fraud for the same crap Trump pulled inflating his properties, but I'm here for the guns. No, that's not true, brother. I'll tell you this, man. I know wire fraud. I enforced them at the, uh, when I was in the FBI. Trump didn't get jammed up for wire fraud. You got to know that you're talking to a guy who's actually in, 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 researched this. Donald Trump, when it comes to his New York inflating his properties case, Donald Trump was called into court for a civil case that he inflated his property, the worth, the net worth of his properties too much. Therefore, he got pretty good amount of loans from banks, good interest rates, and used that money to enrich himself further. The New York state said, hey, you did this because of all of these, you made more money. Therefore, you violated this little civil shit thing that they threw at him, you need you owe us $380 million, whatever that is. So it has nothing to do with wire fraud. The banks were fully paid with interest. Nobody complained. Every, New York, every real estate developer, when they try to get a loan, every, they always inflate the value of their property to get the best loan possible. That's a thing. Banks have their own ways of vetting these claims. If I'm Donald Trump and I say, hey, I own the Trump Tower and it is worth $5 billion. And let's just say in reality, it worth three. it's worth $3 billion. The bank doesn't just take my word for it. Bank assesses the value themselves. And bank decides how much money uh, how much uh, your property is worth, and based on that, how much they're going to give you. That's what happened to Trump. This is a complete and utter, that, especially that New York State uh, valuation of the, the, the assets case, is a complete and utter political hack. What are you going to do? So, Trent, why would that even be illegal? Again, exactly. Why would that even be illegal? But people were just doing this. Like pe people have been doing this for years. When Trump does it, if this is not political, then what is political? You guys tell me. When Trump does it, again, I'm not here try to be your Trumper, Donald Trump guy. I'm not, okay? I'm an independent guy. I, I will freaking be voting for Trump if it's pr Trump versus Biden. And I'll say this openly and proudly. Um, <clears throat> but... I'm not here to just like defend Trump, but it's insane. Nobody's being called a carpet for this, and they just called Trump and 360 or 80 million dollars, man. How crazy that 385 million, something like that. Is how crazy is this? There is no crime, no victim. Every banks were paid with full interest. They willingly lend the money to Trump. Trump paid them back. Suddenly, many years later, when this guy decides to run for office again, hey, you know what? Way back in the day, you uh, overvalued your property, so you should answer some questions. This is the country that we live in right now, unfortunately. 
Uh, it was John Demir, uh, two bucks. Thanks, man. Uh, much love from the Bay. Keep it, keep it up, big brother. Thanks, brother. It was John. Mukam Mousen. Um, Vince Stiller, two bucks. AR build, 72i39 or AK build. Kai, you're the man. Thanks, brother. Appreciate you. And that's an easy answer for me. AR platform, for sure. For sure. Hey, uh, CMMG uh, Mark uh, 47, Resolute. Takes AK mags. Um, let's see what else we got here. Jonathan Couples, he didn't pursue the banks for a loan. Banks offered loans to him. There's a difference. Nobody lost money, no victims. Banks called him a whale and would loan him any money again. Yeah, of course, uh, 100%. I believe that 100%. Dude, there's no victims, no crimes whatsoever. And this dude, many years later, gets called onto carpet when he's running for office. And he's fucking fined $385 million. Can anybody wrap their mind around this? This is the same fucking city that gives squatters rights if they just come into your home. Just 10 days or whatever it is and they, you can't get them out. Gosh, this is the same city that accepted all... In illegal migrants hey come here we will accept you and now they're like hey don't come here new york city is too expensive what a pathetic group of people there man i'm getting a little heated on this one sorry guys um let's see what else we got here uh steve hughes kai you skipped working for atf huh <laughs> that was the next step brother shh I was going to leave the FBI. I was going to go join the ATF and I was going to repeal the NFA. Just wipe it off for you guys. It didn't happen. <laughs> uh, Furnish, why did you switch from the Glock to Hellcat Pro? Also, what ammo do you carry? Have you done any modifications to your Pro besides stippling? I've seen on your IG. Love what you do, man. Brother, thanks a lot. Appreciate you uh, tuning in. Appreciate all of you guys tuning in. I hope you guys do value or find some value from what I got to say or what other folks at Classic say. Hopefully you guys uh, enjoy the channel. I actually didn't uh, switch from Glock. I, I carried Glocks for years, but as a sidearm, right, on duty. When it comes to my concealed carry gun in the last 10 years, it's been Springfield XDS 9mm. That gun has served me very well. I've had no problems with it. <clears throat> I went to Hellcat Pro because I felt it at Chacho last year. Felt really good in the hand. The size was good. 15 plus one, 16 round capacity. I got pretty big hands. I don't want to use a really small gun. The recoil management was pretty good. I was like, okay, this is the gun I'm going to carry. Now Glock, like 43, 43X, amazing gun, no problems. I, it feels pretty good too. I felt it to be maybe slightly snappy. When it comes to my ammo choice, guys, I like Hornady Critical... Uh, Critical defense. I like that round. It's pretty good. Um, and no modifications. Just a dot. I think I got a Swamp Fox, which I got to ditch that thing. Get something else. Uh, <clears throat> and I've got a TLR 7 sub light with Alpha Omega uh, Kydex holster. Custom made. Um, Glocks are awesome, man. I know a lot of people hate the Glocks. I, like awesome as in they're nothing special, but they work. And they are pretty ergonomic for what they are. Simple, dude. Simple guns. Um, Kaya, would you ever join the CIA? I ah, never had any interest. I do have a few friends who work for the agency and a lot of them, they're great people. It just, it just never caught my interest, guys. Living that life just never caught my interest. But they, uh, there are some guys in there doing some good work for the country too. I know a lot of people hate on some of the stuff, and I understand the uh, the reputation of the CIA. I get it. I'm I'm not opposing any of that stuff. But there's some good folks in there doing some good work too for the country. So, what else we got? I'm trying to read the comments over here right now. Uh, oh shit! Okay. Joe, two bucks. Clint told us yesterday that you gave him a hickey. No, he didn't. He shouldn't have. That was something between us, man. That should have stayed secret. Damn it, huh? Um, 
Did I hear that Chicago sued Glock? What? Wait, wait a minute. Chicago sued Sue's Glock. What? Okay, let's uh let's go right there. I'm gonna uh <laughs> I gotta read this thing now. Chicago Sue and Glock. Okay. Yeah, don't fucking lock those people up with your compassion and go sue the gun company. Okay, let's see what's going on here. Click. All right. Chicago Sue's Glock over design that allows easy conversion to machine guns. Are you kidding me? One critic says uh, suing a gun maker over its design is like suing an automaker for cars that go too fast and crash. Pretty good point. Less than a year ago, Chicago uh, sued car makers over... What the heck is going on here? Less than a year ago... Less than a year after Chicago sued car makers over rampant auto thefts. Are you kidding? Okay. The city filed another high-profile consumer lawsuit Tuesday targeting Glock, saying the popular firearm maker ignored warnings that its handguns can easily can be easily converted into machine guns. Basically go pew, pew, pew at, you know. Tiny devices called auto sears or switches can be affixed to handguns such as Glocks, allowing them to fire repeatedly with a single trigger pull. Devices can cost less than 25 bucks and can be bought online, marketed for other purposes like attachments for airsoft guns. They can even be manufactured at home with 3D pr printers. Yeah, go to Glock. Let's just not go after people individually. Let's not go after some of those things that are sold online specifically for that. Let's not go after those guys. Let's go to Glock. Because you know why? Because Glock has a deep pocket. They'll probably pay you something and settle in court with something. Chicago, I'm embarrassed if you're from Chicago. It's such an amazing city, but it's run by idiots. All right, moving on. What else we got? Okay, so Spressers. <laughs> Spressers, guys. <sighs> Here is why you should suppress your rifle. If you're a hunter, I mean, a lot of guys hunt out there, right? You hunt a hog or whatever you hunt. But first of all, when you fire a suppress gun, you, you won't be able to... People can't tell where the round is coming from. There's so many advantages, but let's just go into hunting and then I'm going to go to home defense real quick. <clears throat> people can't tell where the... Oh, well, animals can't tell where the round is coming from. They'll get all disoriented. Uh, a lot of times if it's further away, like, you know, it'll be pretty quiet so animals won't be startled too crazy. And uh, so you'll be able to get multiple kills. If you got some uh, pets with you, like, you know, you got people that got dogs, like your dog that goes and chases after or gets the kill for you, the, the game for you, or just simply a companion. Well, you shoot and suppress, you're going to protect their ears, right? If you bang, 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 you're actually going to protect their ears. Shooting suppress is going to give you, well, this could be debated, but it does make you more accurate, maybe perhaps because you don't you don't get startled with the concussive blast of the gun. You know, it just kind of goes pew, right? He, he, perhaps you're more steady with it because of it. But it does, you know, there's reports out there that you shoot a little bit more accurately with suppress fire. Uh, so for the hunting element, there, there is that, you know. And when it comes to home defense or personal defense, property defense... Guys, I don't know. Have you ever fired a 5.56? Five, five, Let's just talk about 5.56. Five, five, even 7.62, it doesn't matter. A rifle, high-powered rifle uh, rifle cartridge indoors. If you guys have never fired it indoors, guys, I promise you, it is so freaking concussive. I've done some shoot houses. I got my rifle. I got my 11.5 inch. The guy's got his 11.5 inch. No suppressor. 5.56. Five, five, just a good old compensator flash hider. And I'm engaging this target. My buddy's engaging that target. Or he just turns in. We were engaging at the same target. Bang, bang, bang. And even with hearing protection that we would have, it was just concussive. You'd feel it in your chest. And that could in any way, like a little bit, if you didn't have ears, that could disorient you. Especially if you have people in the house with you for home defense purposes, it would literally disorient you. You could lose your hearing or kind of diminish it a little bit. And that could be, you could engage one target. There could be uh, other assailants in the house or property. 
and you could perhaps not hear them because the gunfire is happening at your location. You could disorient yourself. The guy's in the other room. He's not really disoriented. It could be bad. There's also that. Um, having a suppressed fire obviously is going to eliminate or minimize your flash profile. So you're going to not really give up your position. And uh, if it's tuned properly, you'll have a softer uh, shooting experience. Uh, overall, it's just going to serve you better when you shoot suppressed. It, you know, some people argue uh, that, you know, when you fire bang, 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 people hear the gunshots, they'll just run. There, maybe there'll be a couple of guys on a driveway. They hear the gunshots inside the house, they'll run. I promise you, suppressors aren't like the Hollywood. They don't, they don't just go like, choo, choo, choo. They don't do that stuff, right? You will still hear a crack unless you're shooting subsonic 300 blackout that I have here. Uh, then you'll hear the pressure only, the action of the gun and the pressure, uh, the air coming from the uh, suppressor. Still, you'll hear stuff, right? And uh, so th it's, in my opinion, it's incredibly effective. Uh, it's not going to disorient you. When you, you can communicate with people in your home a lot better uh, with the suppressor. And so it's perfect. The downside is obviously... You, you have to do the $200 tax stamp and go through the approval process. And uh, it, it has some weight. And it is a, it's an item that needs to be maintained like crazy, you guys. You got to clean that thing or else if you clog it, you'll have some malfunctions. And especially like direct impingement gu uh, guns, you know, they pretty much eat where they shit. So you'll have your bolt real dirty. You'll have a lot of back pressure. If you don't have your gun properly tuned, it'll beat the living shit out of your gun. That bolt's going to come back real real hard with some high-intense back pressure. But if it's properly tuned, it's going to be a better shooting experience. And as, as long as you properly clean it, the gun is going to run no problem. And uh, overall, it's going to serve you a lot better. Dude, Spresser, once you start shooting Spressed, you don't want to go back shooting on Spressed. And that's been my experience. <laughs> And then there we, we have guy, guys like Michael. I'm at 239 days waiting for the ATF. And there's also that crap from the ATF. So thanks, ATF. Uh, Cole, uh, what if you can't own a suppressor in your state? I've shot a f up to a 50 BMG suppressed. And wow, did it make a difference? Well, then you guys need to bother the living shit out of your uh, representatives and vote properly to get those... Uh, if you can, I understand. California, Illinois, I get it. But uh, definitely bother the living shit out of your uh, representatives. It's sad that if you can't own, there's nothing you can do, man. You don't want to violate the laws and then next thing you know, get in trouble. If you can legally own it, I think suppressors are absolutely superior. It changes the shooting experience. It Like, have you ever heard the term like, hey, let me turn the volume down on my radio so I can see better? Right? That's a true thing. When I was a police officer, we were we would be out. I'd be listening to the radio sometimes, whatever, and I'd be looking for I don't know a burglar or something, right? I'd have to turn the volume down on my radio a little completely so I could see better because I couldn't focus. Because our sensors, right, the five major sensors, like when you have loud bangs coming into your ear, your brain has to process that. It leaves an effect on your brain, in your ears. Your ears will ring. Your brain has to process that. And with that, you're going to have some disorientation. You're going to have, uh, like, you, you're not going to be as effective as you would be with a suppressor. You'll, be, you'll, you'll have more focus with a suppressed fire than unsuppressed, especially indoors with that concussive force. So there is that. Um, what else we got? Casper, Kaya, how do you feel about binary triggers? I'm going to be straight up honest with you, Casper. I don't like them. It, they trip me up. I am programmed in here to press that trigger. It goes bang. When I let my finger go, nothing happens. Every time I grab a binary trigger, I'm like, bang, bang. But like, what the heck? What's going on? Almost like trips me up. Like, I am unsafe. Let's just say I would be unsafe with a binary trigger. No, I don't like them. I can totally see that if you are um, a, an avid binary shooter, it's a, it's, it's a range thing, right? 
You can really shoot fast. You can have a lot of fun with it. But it's something that I haven't been able to do. I've shot binary a lot at Classic. I just haven't been able to like it, man. So. Crunchy, I missed it. What's a daily struggle for you? Uh, Mayo, thoughts on RC2 versus Flow 5.56 on espressors being tucked. Dude, that's hard. RC2 is amazing. I, I'll be honest with you. Amazing. Flow 5.56 obviously is going to have less back pressure because they got the flow through technology, right? Um, dude, they're both great. I mean, which one? RC2 is going to be, I think, quieter. And uh, Flow 5.56 is going to have less back pressure. So there's that. Um, what else we got? Steve, Kaya, my favorite quote, short quote. If you heard my shot, you were never the target. Damn, Steve. Damn, Steve. All right, 90 millimeter or 45 caliber. What do you guys think? You guys let me know. I want to know in the comment section. I'm going to tell you my thoughts. 9 millimeter or 45 caliber. Go. I want to see. 9 millimeter. 9 millimeter. Okay, so you guys are saying 9 millimeter. 9 millimeter. Dude, a lot of young guns over here. A lot of 9 millimeter uh, folks over here. I'm with you guys. Nine millimeter, here are my reasons. In 2024, this technology, you can deliver a devastating hit from a nine millimeter gun, nine millimeter uh, ammo. Devastating hit, right? Those Hornady, for example, Hornady Critical Duty, like G2, these things will F you up, right? You get more capacity, cheaper ammo. I, I truly believe in capacity, guys. So you got that 45, this heavy-ass gun, more recoil, obviously, with a 9 millimeter you got less recoil, so you'll have more accurate, better follow-through shots. And pretty much everybody can handle, pretty much, uh, a 9 millimeter recoil, but not everybody can handle nine, if I, 45 recoil, like some really smaller uh, folks, like females, males, doesn't matter. Uh, so there is, there is that. So for me, a nine millimeter versus 45, like 45 is an amazing caliber and 45 is here to stay, by the way, 40 obsolete, whatever, right? 45 is here to stay. I think 45 is going to be here for very, very long term, but nine millimeter, man, I think nine is just absolutely dominating the field. Uh, again, availability, uh, capacity, recoil management, but yet that devastating, still very, very devastating terminal effect. So nine all day long for me, guys. I've seen people shot with 45. I've seen them drop like a rock. 45 is amazing. That does, this doesn't mean, me picking nine millimeter doesn't mean, oh, it just hits harder than 45. We're not saying that. We're just saying you can deliver just as effective shots with a nine millimeter, but yet still have all the benefits of a nine millimeter. Hazman, Kai, what's your PR on bench press? I could do like 315, but I don't really go hard. And lately I've, you know, I'm, I'm, ha I'm having this shoulder problem, man. It hasn't gone away. So I try to, um, so I try to kind of keep it safe. So I, when I bench, I do like 225s. Um, what else we got? Mm -mm -mm. Uh, duh. I'm trying to see what else you got here. Jones, I can't buy into flow through cans after hearing Kevin <laughs> on the podcast. Yeah, and Kevin knows what he's doing, man. Like, I haven't had the pleasure to meet him, but Jason, so Jason on our channel, if you guys uh, don't know, you should know who Jason is. Jason and Kevin are uh, good pals, and I think we're going to do some more stuff with Q. And anybody who doesn't know who Kevin is, Kevin is the owner of Q, and Kevin is an engineer. He's he's a genius, right? From what I hear, yeah, he's had some problems with the flow through stuff. But there's one fact: Huxworks is actually doing some good stuff out there. They got the FBI HRT contract. FBI SWAT team starting to use it. Um, I'm sure they they will continue to change and better their product. But so far, the flow through seems to be okay. But again, I'm not as knowledgeable as Kevin when it comes to that topic. 
Um, JC, I love you, brother. Love you back, man. Thanks. I really appreciate you guys. Um, moving on, what else we got? Clench Eastwood. Kai, if tomorrow full auto was legalized, would you recommend it for home defense or stick to semi? 100% semi, guys. 100%. Even look at the special ops guys. Ask all these special ops guys. When they enter into a room, do they go full auto? There is a place for full auto, full auto for sure. But dude, semi, man. Unless you just go into a place, there's a bunch of hostiles, you're going know, to spray all of them. That's a different thing. Uh, but they don't go full auto. They go semi, maybe some three-round burst, but they don't go full auto, you know. So I would say semi, man. For home defense, semi. Uh, what else we got? Oh, man, I'm at two hours, so it looks like, man, time went by pretty fast today, huh? It was really, really good. What else we got? Okay, let me ask you guys a question. 10 millimeter versus 45 caliber. Okay, which one would you rather carry? Or a home defense, you go out to the woods. Okay, 10 millimeter versus 45. Let's, let's uh, talk about that for a minute before we shut it down. Ten millimeter all day long. Really? Everybody's going ten millimeter. Forty-five ACP Thompson. Damn, everybody's okay. Wait, wait, wait. We got forty-fives here. We got a few forty-fives. Okay, forty-five guys are showing up slowly. Generally, not forty caliber, brother. No, why forty caliber? 40 is freaking just nasty. Like, 40 is too snappy. It's just, it's the same as 9mm, but with all the, uh, without all the benefits. 45 and 10. I would say 10mm, guys, because 10, I've shot multiple 10mm. If you guys haven't seen some of the videos we made, definitely check them out. 10mm recoils about the same as 45. For me, it doesn't, it definitely, it certainly does not recoil more. And it goes faster. Velocity is king, man, when it comes to terminal effects. It's a pretty, you know, it's a 40 caliber round with a hollow point. That shit opens up pretty good. And I think 10 millimeter is superior to 45, guys. Again, I'm not saying 45 is not an effective round. It certainly is a nasty round, but I think 10 millimeter is nastier. Okay, so 5.56 five, versus 7.62 by 39. Which one is a nastier round? What do you guys think? 5.56 five, versus 7.62 by 39 from an AK. I know Kyle loves 32 ACP. God damn, Bob. <laughs> you, you watched the James Rees video, right? I'm actually going to pull that up. Hold on. I'm going to pull that shit up. I love James, dude. James is freaking awesome. All right. We're going to watch this video. It's just eight minutes. 760 by 39, 556. Five, okay, this is split pretty good. Yeah. I, I'm a 556 five, guy. You know, I'm a 556 five, guy, man. All right. Hey, watch this out, guys. So it's me and James and Ian from Forgotten Weapons. This is really good. You guys got to watch this. We were in Germany. Again, tomorrow we'll have our video coming out at Classic. I also did a video with, spoiler alert for folks who are here, with James and Ian, uh, top five firearms of EVA 20, IWA 2024. Germans use, say, V. Uh, Germans, uh, uh, for W, Germans actually pronounce it like a V, like the way we say V. So I call it EVA. Anyways, here it is. Hey everyone, James Reeves, TFB TV. Welcome to Nuremberg. It's EWA 2024. You recognize the guys that are next to me because they're more famous than me. You've got Kaya from Classic Firearms and of course, Ian from Forgotten Weapons. Ian being the super celebrity that he is. 
we're doing this episode in, in your honor, sir. That's, that's true. And this is called, that is true. Uh, it's called Future Forgotten Weapons from EWA 2024. We're going to talk about the guns that we saw at this show that are going to be on Ian's program in the next probably five years. So uh, to go ahead and start, you know what, Kaya, why don't you lead us off with one of yours? We're going to do two a man. Okay. So guys, when it comes to James and Ian, I'll tell you guys, James is just like that. What you see on the screen with James is what you get in person. I freaking love that guy. He, in fact, I'm at Classic Firearms, right? I do the same thing that James does in front of the camera, talk, whatever. He is one of my idols, role models, because he's so good. He's so good at talking in front of the camera. He's so good at just his articulation, his, the language, the way he uses the language, so good. I watch his stuff and I try to take some pointers. I'm like, hey, you know, he, oh, he does it this way. I like that. So I'll, I'll try to do the same thing like that. So he's one of those guys that I look up to when it comes to doing this stuff. And I got to meet Ian and Ian and I became uh, uh, buddies too. And Ian is an extremely articulate, very smart nerd. He is good. And Ian is exactly what you see on your, on the camera too. Like the, the, he is the same guy. So none of these guys actually put on a persona in front of the camera. Literally off camera, same thing. Absolutely amazing. I want you guys to look at this trio. It's me, James, and Ian. We will collaborate more. We'll do more stuff. We became friends, close friends. We will do more stuff together. Stay tuned. It's going to happen in 2024 this year. At least multiple videos, me, Ian, and James. So going forward, classic, the TFB, James Reeves, I mean, he's got his personal channel, and uh, Ian at Forgotten Weapons will collaborate continuously. So there is that. That's your spoiler. So continue. Okay, to a man. Hmm. I will go with Tangfolio TTR sniper rifle. Why is that? Okay, the thing was, I thought it was like old school technology, costs about over 10 grand, 12 grand, something like that, and it wasn't ergonomic at all. I just can't justify 10 or $12,000 for that sniper rifle that looked like boxy upper this receiver was in the insane. action area. Every time you pulled, pulled the bolt back, the uh, folding stock, that hinge area was kind of protruding out so my knuckle would hit it every single time. It just wasn't all that ergonomic and looked... It just didn't look like a 2024 gun. Uh, Hector, I saw this video very good. Just wondering what time it was filmed. It was around like, uh, I believe, five, five, between 5 and 6 p.m., something like that. In the evening, we were done with the show, so we filmed it. So. Especially for $10,000, $12,000. That one, I don't think that's going to make it. And I love my buddy Massimo, yeah. Tim Folio, but that has been at... By the way, I'm not drinking. Some people say, oh, he's drinking Coke. No, I'm drinking whiskey with Diet Coke because I got to keep the figure right. Every single Iwa that I've been to for the past three years. So that uh, there's some credit there. I wonder if Ian's going to agree with you when he reviews it in five years. Ian, what about yours? So for me, it would be the Gungnir, uh, which was uh, appears to be basically an this was a engineer. This kind of trippy gun, for sure. Multi-caliber rifle system, bullpup, and... Can run hey, this was great, man. We, we had a good time. Cal, mm -hmm. Which is interesting. Like, it's a fascinating... We had a really good time. Look at us walking. That means it's by definition... In Nuremberg, Germany, we got our drinks in our hands, walking the streets, the old school Nuremberg, Germany streets. Amazing. This was, this was literally the best time. And after that, we got so freaking drunk. We went and drank. We had dinner. We had a blast, dude. We were together till like midnight. ...worse at everything than any gun that's <laughs> purpose-built. Like, no military. And the guy was looking for a military contract, uh, yep, yep. but then he also wanted to sell it to German hunters, mm. specifically because German hunters have a lot of money. Let the man dream, Ian. <laughs> Ian Crusher of Dreams in Nuremberg. Yeah, yeah. So, it, so here's the funny thing. I actually didn't do a video on it because I was specifically thinking, I'm like, in five years, this is... Dude, savage burn loading. <laughs> uh... Evo seems like an awesome time. Evo was amazing, guys. We made so many connections. Little spoiler alert. Multiple giant manufacturers like HK, CZ, many other, Breda, BNT, all the, they all invited us to visit their factory. We're going to make that happen. You guys stay tuned for that. 
Finnish Brutality in Finland, August 24th. We're going to do that with Ian. Uh, there's so many things we're going to do, bro. Like, we've made so many connections at EVA. Amazing time. There's some really good stuff coming your way in 2024, guys. This year, uh, we'll make it happen. Oh, and by the way, Terran Tactical, another contest from Terran Tactical coming soon. I talked to Terran about it. He's on board. We're going back there, guys. So there's that. This is going to be in someone's collection, and I'm going to run into it. I'm going to be able to do a full <laughs> turn on it. Is that horrible? That's maybe a little bit horrible. From the from the man himself, he's like, I'm reviewing this in several years. I thought it was cool. The guy was nice. He was super passionate. Whatever. Yes. I'm going to go ahead and and start with mine. I think this is a, you know I'm quite proud of myself for this one. It was like the Vignir. I'm going to plug it in with B-roll right now, but it was like the Vig 007, which was a roller delayed blowback pistol that is kind of cz 75 ish it's jack well, anyways guys this is the video james reeves go to his channel it's it's got 170k views too oh that's great and uh and people liked it too crossover of the century and all the good stuff so oh wait there's something about me kai is a great sport for standing at the bottom of the <laughs> that water slide decline during the second half of the video so that James and Ian can look tall for a few minutes. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. He is. Wait, he's talking about right here. <clears throat> this is it. Concept is really cool. They made like, I will. Wait, wait. I... There you go. It's going to be, you're going to be reviewing yes. it. I stood down a little bit. So they, <laughs> that's funny. You're going to hate it whenever you get it in a couple. Okay. Of Anyways, I don't want to spoil the whole thing, guys. James Reeves, go check this thing out. Watch the video if you guys are interested. It's pretty good. And uh, stop sharing. Anyways, um, guys, I'm going to call it quits for tonight. If that's okay with you guys, pretty much every Wednesday, live stream over here. So definitely check it out. Again, Classic Firearms YouTube channel we have outside the warehouse. CF Clips is one of the new channels we have and cf podcast you'll see a podcast that i uh, me and clint did with uh, ian at forgotten weapons and uh probably do something with james so many good things are coming out cf podcast definitely check that out and uh always check out cfcontest.com that's a really good thing too so guys i really appreciate this you guys appreciate you guys tuning in i hope you guys enjoyed this live stream this was actually a really good time and uh, Instagram, Copper Kaya, right here at the bottom left, C-O-P-P-E-R, Copper like the metal, Kaya. If you guys are interested, you guys can follow me there. And I uh, sometimes share some stuff uh, when it comes to the job and some personal stuff. Guys, really appreciate you guys. I'm taking off. Always appreciate the support. So thanks a lot for giving me a chance here at Classic and letting me kind of show you guys who I am over the last year and a half. So... There's that. Thanks for accepting me because initially it wasn't really well received. So I'm here. All right, guys, take care. God bless. And we'll see you on the next one. I'm out. Take care.